as part of another program that I'm working on. I need to be able to draw some images to the screen and I need to do it very quickly and it needs to be the same image every single time. It's actually a, a program that will display uh, a binary value using a series of uh, eight lights or it's what's going to represent sort of LEDs and either on or off. Now, there's a couple different ways I could do that. I could draw every uh, one of these LEDs uh, using the open Watcom functions, you know, called ellipse, and that will draw either a circle or an ellipse, uh, either filled or, or or just the border. And I could do a series of, uh, of those calls to ellipse to, you know, sort of draw an LED every single time. But what happens is when you need to draw uh, those LEDs using that series of ellipse functions, uh, you can actually sometimes kind of see little flashes of the uh, the ellipse being drawn. And on a slower machine, that's going to be a much bigger problem. So the better way to do that is to actually draw it once on screen and then save a copy of that into memory using a function called get image. And then every time you need to use that, that image that you've just drawn and copied, you're going to use another function in OpenWatcom called put image. And that's the better way to do this program. So we're going to do that. We're going to do a, a program that will display a binary value uh, as 8 bits uh, using these LEDs that are either on or they're off. And we're going to do that by drawing some LEDs and then copying them to memory and then just printing out a series of 8 on or off LEDs. So let's start a new program. I don't have anything in this directory, so I'm gonna do a directory here. You can see nothing in here. Let's start a new file. Uh, and we use the Fed editor for that. And I, I like using the Fed editor because it's a folding editor uh, and it's a good programmer's editor. And you can install it as part of FreeDOS 1.3. You can use FD Impuls and go under editors and you can install it there. I've made some customizations in another video where I set up the colors to look a certain way. Uh, and so that's why it's gonna look the way that it does. Your default fed will not look this way until you set the colors. Uh, and then we're gonna just do a program called binary.c. Now I need to have the bare bones for the C program. So we're going to do an include of standard io.h. And that allows me to do, you know, printing anything to the screen. If I need to print anything uh, back in console mode, I'm going to do include uh, standard lib.h. And that's going to be important because when we uh, grab an image from the screen, we need to allocate memory for it. And then we need to free it. And that means we need standard lib because uh, that's where those functions live. And then we need to do graphics mode. So we're going to do include uh, graph.h. Now I need to be able to know how big my uh, LED is going to be. And I'm just going to hard code that as a, as a quick way to do this program. So we're going to define uh, size as, oh, let's just pick a value like, let's do 60. All right, so let's draw a uh, an LED to the screen. So we're going to do that as a function uh, called, uh, let's say, draw light. And this is going to take a couple of parameters. It's going to need to take the parameter that says, where should it draw the light? This LED that's either on or off. And so we'll do uh, int x and int oops, y. And then what color do we want to draw this? What's the what's the, uh, the the base color of this? And so we'll do int color. And then what's the uh, highlight color for this? And so we'll do an int, uh, we'll just say highlight. And uh, all right, so let's, that, those are our functions, our, our, our function definition for draw light. And this is going to use a series of ellipse calls that will draw sort of a funky looking uh, LED. It's just meant to be sort of a cartoon representation almost of an LED seen from the front. So I'm going to do this first by uh, doing a set color. This is an open Watcom function, and that's going to be the color of my LED, whatever I've passed in there. And then I'm going to use an ellipse function, another open Watcom function. And of course, if I define this to be, you know, square uh, sort of boundary, then that'll draw a perfect circle. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say, uh, uh, first, this needs to be uh, either a filled interior, or I'm going to tell Open Watcom to just draw an outline. And in this case, I'm going to do G fill interior. I'm going to draw the full uh, base color of the LED background. And that needs to start at X and Y. 
And then how big is it? Well, it's going to be X plus size, Y plus size. And then I'm going to sort of do a highlight on top of that. So I need to basically do a border around it. So I'm going to do uh, set color to be the highlight color. And I'm going to draw an ellipse that instead of being G fill interior, is going to be just G border. That's going to be just a, an empty circle, and we're not going to draw anything inside it. So it'll, it'll basically be drawing a circle uh, bordering basically around this other circle that I've got here. And so that needs to be the same dimensions, X and Y, and it goes to X plus size, Y plus size. And then I can draw a little bit of, you know, sort of extra detail in the middle, uh, which makes it look kind of nice. And so I'm going to do um, a uh, set color back to the main color. And, uh, oh, actually, before I do that, I want to actually draw an ellipse, uh, sort of this highlight color, and then I'm going to erase part of it with that set color uh, uh uh, that I just that I just put down. So before I do the set color and then erase part of it, let's actually draw a highlight uh, ellipse, and that's going to be an ellipse function that is going to be a filled interior G fill interior. Oops, with an underscore at the beginning, G fill interior. And where would I want that to be? So this is going to be a little bit offset into the middle of my uh, LED light, and so that's going to be X plus and that's going to be size divided by three. And, uh, and I also, by the way, spelled interior, so interior. And that's going to be, as I said, X plus uh, size divided by three. So it's going to be moved in by one third. Uh, same for the Y offset, so Y plus size by three. And then uh, where is it going to end? So I want this to be a circle that's uh, basically centered around the middle part of the LED. So we're going to do X plus uh, size times two divided by three. So two thirds, so it goes from one third to two third. And then Y plus size times two thirds. And so if I've done this right, <laughs> this will uh, create a highlight circle that is across the very center part of the uh, of the of this light, this uh, the circle, and then I'm going to erase part of it now. So I'm going to I've now set the background color or the base color of the LED, and we're going to draw another ellipse over top of that, and that will uh, make the, uh, the 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 LED sort of look like a little bit of bites been taken out of it. And if you do a little bit of experimenting, which is what I did before I did this video, uh, it basically makes it look like there's a little bit of a shining light, uh, like a room light. Uh, on this LED when seen from the front. So we're going to do another ellipse function. Just going to take a bite out of that one. So we're going to do a G fill interior. And where do I want this to be? I want this to be uh, basically the same uh, one third to two thirds circle that I drew, but I'm going to draw, I'm going to offset it by one. So I'm going to do X plus one plus size by three. And so that's what I've done up above, just offsetting it by one pixel. And then Y plus one plus size by three. And uh, where do I want to be? I need to make a little room here. Uh, I want it to end up at uh, the same thing offset by one. So we're going to do X plus one plus size times two thirds. And then Y plus size, oops, Y plus one plus size times two thirds. And that should be, if I've done this right, um, an LED that will uh, will look like it's got a little bit of a, of a highlight on it. Uh, let's let's try this as an experiment. Before I make this uh, 60 as a size, let's just make sure we can see what we're looking at. We'll make this 100 just temporarily. And now let's write a main function. So we're going to do an int uh, main function. And let's draw a um, uh, the LED on the screen, just so we can kind of see what we're looking at. So uh, we're going to uh, set the video mode, set video mode, and we're going to do that with a uh, uh, set video mode. 
B res 16 color. Uh, I really should be doing a check here to make sure that uh, the switching of the video mode works. But for simplicity on this uh, programming video, I'm going to skip the, uh, the, the check there. Uh, and I'm going to set the, uh, I'm going to draw a color on the back of the screen so we can see everything. And do a set color. And what color do I want to use? Let's use blue. So I'm going to set that as a one. And that should be blue. And then we'll do a rectangle. Rectangle. And that's going to be a filled rectangle. So G fill interior. It's another function uh, from Open Watcom. And that's going to be starting at zero, zero, which is the upper left. Graphics routines start at zero, zero. And that means that uh, 640 by 480 is going to be 640 minus 1 and 480 minus 1. I could actually just type in 639 and 479, but the compiler optimization will take care of that for me. So I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, this makes it a little bit more readable as we're sort of following along. And now that we've done that, let's just go ahead and real quick draw an LED on the screen to make sure that it works. Uh, so uh, draw an LED. So I'm going to uh, uh, draw my light. And if you remember, the function was uh, the uh, location. And let's just, let's just put it uh, at 100, 100. I'm just, it's a quick test here to make sure that it works. We should always make sure that things work. So that's going to start at 100, 100. And then uh, what color do I want as my uh, background color? So let's do this as a, a light that's on. And so I want to use uh, four, which should be a regular red color. And then 12 is my highlight color, because if you uh, do the addition, uh, that gives you, uh, you know, uh, four plus eight is 12. And that means you're, that'll give you the high uh, versions of the colors. Uh, so that will be bright red. And so that would look like an LED that's been turned on. And so that's what I want to do there. I'm going to just draw a light. And then I'm going to, uh, let's just real quick uh, pause before we go back to the operating system. Uh, and so we'll do pause, uh, which is a, isn't a function I've written yet. And then we'll go ahead and just be done. And that's going to be uh, set video mode, oops, video mode as default mode, and then return back to the operating system. All right, so that should be our test. Oh, I need to write the pause function. So I'm going to do a pause function up here. Void uh, pause. And that's going to, normally I would just do the get ch call. But the thing about get ch is if you enter in a, an extended key, like one of the function keys, uh, that's going to return zero. And you're supposed to call get ch one more time to get the extended code. So actually we need to do this test here. If get ch is zero, then call get ch again. Uh, and then once I've done that, now I've basically cleared that, that second call. Being a little bit clean there. Uh, and so now what I've done now is I've, I've got a simple program that is gonna test my drawing function. So it's gonna set the video uh, mode up here. And then it's going to set the uh, color and draw a rectangle. So basically clear the screen with blue. And then we're going to draw an LED uh, using the function that we have up above. And then uh, we're going to wait for the user to press a key. And then we're going to exit back the operating system. So let's compile that and see if I've done it right. WCL. And to keep from adding all the extra text on the screen, we'll do dash Q. And that'll be sort of be a quiet and then binary.c. And no function product. Oh, yeah, because I need to add that. So let's do a uh, real quick fed uh, binary.c. So where is that uh, get ch function? That is in the uh, include uh, conio library. There we go. So now we don't have a problem with that. So now we can run the binary and see if it is working so far. Are we able to draw an LED on screen? And there it is. I've got an LED that looks like it's on. And so that's what I want to do. I want to have an LED that kind of looks like it's been turned on. If I hit space, it'll go back to the operating system and we can do another version of that binary.c. And instead of uh, doing it as on, let's do it as off this time. And so I'm going to do zero, which should be black. 
and then that'll be, I would say four, and that'll give me the regular version of red. And so if I exit and recompile that, now I've got an LED that's been turned off. It looks exactly the same. It's been drawing, use rather, it's using the same drawing functions that I used before, uh, but I'm just giving it some parameters that'll tell it what colors to use. Now I could use this all the time in a program that will actually display values. In fact, let's do that real quick. Um, do fed binary.c and we're going to change the size back to let's let's make it uh, something a little bit more manageable, we'll say 60. And then um, let's write a function up here that is going to display um, the uh, uh, the light in either an on or an off state. So um, avoid function, and we'll call it show binary. And what binary value do I want to display? This would be an 8-bit value. So we'll do an int value, and then int x, int y. This is where I want to draw my binary value up on the screen. And to do this, I need to be able to track the bits that I'm using. So we'll do an integer variable called bit. Now, I want to loop through from the left to the right. So I'll do a for loop where bit is 7, because that's the leftmost bit, right? It's bit from the right is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's going from right to left. And so from bit 7, and as long as bit is greater than or equal to 0, then I'm going to do bit minus minus. And then I'm going to, uh, if the value binary and the value of one pushed to the left that bit number of times. So if that's a, uh, a one basically because it's going to be a one uh if that value is a a non-zero value then i want it to draw a light that is on so basically it's that light is representing a single bit and so i'm going to say if oops i've already done the f so let's go ahead and draw the light and that's going to be at x plus um I need to do a little bit of offset here going backwards the other way. So we'll do seven minus the bit times the size. And then at, uh, at what Y value, what's well, the Y value that came in? And then uh, what colors do I want to use? So I want to use the colors we, as we saw before. So this is, this is something that, um, this is a, a value that is uh, turned on. And so I want to do four because that's red and then 12 because that's going to be a bright red. And so that's going to be four is red, 12 oops, is bright red. And that's that if. Now, if it's, uh, if it's any other value, which is only other one other value, uh, then I'm going to draw the light again using a same position x plus seven minus the bit times oops, times the size y and then the other values zero and four and that was because zero is black and four is a regular red all right so that is uh iterating through a um that's that's iterating through and it's now created a uh, a bit pattern represented with these little LEDs that's showing uh, either it's on or it's off. And the best way to show kind of how this looks in terms of being able to see these artifacts is if I now, uh, instead of drawing an LED, I'm gonna draw uh, a pattern. So I'll say draw a bit pattern. Let's do a for loop. So we're going to do for uh, n, which I haven't done yet. So we'll do an integer value of n, integer n, or n equals zero. And as long as n is less than 256, then we're going to do n plus plus. And we're going to 
uh, show binary. And that was going to be um, the value n. And at what uh, position? So let's let's pick a position here of let's say uh, 80 and 200. I'm just going to hard code that. So that's going to be at x and y coordinate of 80 and 200. That's where it's going to start printing this value. And it's going to do it from 0 to 256 as quickly as it can. And then when it's done, it's going to prompt the user to press a key. It's not even prompt. Just going to wait for the user to press a key, and then it'll shut down the video screen. Let's see if I've done this right. So we're going to go ahead and exit that, and we're going to Watcom, Compiler, and Linker. And we'll do Q so it's quiet, so it doesn't show anything. It's, if, it's, if it's an error, it'll show me. Binary.c. And, ooh, I'm not seeing any errors. That's good. So we'll run binary. So this should count up from 0 to 255. And there it is, it's counting 0 to 255. Now, the thing is, if you watch carefully, you can see where it, you can see the um, uh, the lights themselves being drawn. Uh, if you look specifically, let me run it one more time. If you look specifically in that center part where the highlight is, remember where we drew the, the highlight, and then we uh, offset by one to erase that highlight. You, you watch very carefully, you can actually see that being lit up. And maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but I, I, I can see that and it just looks a little bit weird. So I don't want to do that. Rather than doing that, I'm going to do a different way to capture this. And so I'm going to do uh, edit our program, binary.c. And I'm going to, um, down here, before I do any drawing, of a bit pattern. Let's actually uh, grab an on and an off light. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now, uh, how am I going to do that? So I want to uh, be able to grab, uh, draw a light that's on, and then I'm going to draw a light that's off. So for that, I'm going to need to do a show binary. Oops, actually, not even a show binary. It's a draw light. So draw light. And remember, that function was going to look like... I lost my notes. All right, so that function is going to look like um, the X and Y. And so we'll put that at, uh, at 80 and 200, just so we can, uh, when we actually start drawing our, our iteration. We're going to just overwrite it, basically. And so we're going to draw a light at 80 and, uh, and 200. And uh, that is going to look like uh, what color do I want to use. So this is going to be an on light. And so I want that to look like uh, 4 and 12. Those are my colors I used before, right? That was going to be uh, 4 is red and 12 is a bright red. Later on, I want to do a draw light at that same position, 80 and 200. But in that case, I'm going to do 0 and 4. That's going to be an off light because 0 is black and uh, 4 is a regular red. So once I've drawn that light, I now need to grab that light somewhere. I need to be able to store it in memory. And that means I need to uh, hold on to uh, make, I need to make room for it. So let's, let's, let's make a variable up here called uh, uh, bit on. And it needs to be a pointer variable. And the get image and put image functions uh, need that to be of type care. So it's a pointer to a care. We're also going to need it for the off. So we'll do care bit off. Okay. So now that I've done that, now that I've drawn the light, I need to uh, capture that. So bit on is going to be care type datacast. And I now need to uh, allocate memory for it using the malloc function. Now, malloc, as you know, normally would tell you, or you, you would tell it how much memory to reserve. And you can do that with a, another function call called image size. And you tell it where you want to look at it on screen. 
and it'll figure out how much space it needs to use for get image to store that variable uh, that that, uh, that region of screen so we're going to do starting at 80 and 200 and then how big is that it's going to be 80 plus size and 200 plus size and so now i've allocated enough memory for it and um, i'm going to not deal with the uh uh, error checking. So let's just go ahead and grab some memory here. So we'll just uh, do get image uh, at that region. So it's 80 to 200, 80 and 200 is the starting point. And then uh, where does it need to, how big is it going to be? It's going to be 80 plus size and 200 plus size. And then it's going to store that in bit. Um, now let's look at the, uh, we've now drawn a light that is in this case on, and then we've made room for it. And then we've grabbed that region of memory or of the screen and stored it in memory. And we're going to do the same thing down here for an off light. And so now we've drawn a light that's off and we're going to do bit off is care star data point, a data value, malloc. And then how much room do we need to use? Well, we're going to use the image size function for that image size, 80, 200, 80 plus size, 200 plus size. And now I'm going to get that image, get image, starting at 80 and 200 to 80 plus size, 200 plus size. I'm going to store that in bit off. Now I've drawn the light that is off and then I've made room for it as memory. And then I've stored that bit pattern uh, from the screen into that, that uh, variable, basically that array. Uh, before I'm done then, by the way, uh, I now need to free my, uh, my variables. So I need to free that memory, free, bit on free bit off now we can use that same bit pattern uh, that we've just captured and we can actually draw a series of bit patterns here one more time let's do 4 n equals 0 n is less than 256 n plus plus and when we're done with that, we'll do another pause. So we can actually just run one after the other. So you can kind of see what it looks like. All right. So now I need to have a different function, very similar function, but it's called show. Let's just call it show bin. Um, all right. So this is going to have another one that's going to be uh, the value that I'm going to, going to display. And then where is it going to start? 80 and 200. And I need to also give it the, in this case, the uh, the bit, or the the region of memory that we copied for the on light, and the region that we copied for the off light. So we're going to do, pass it bit on and bit off. All right. So before we get too carried away, let's go ahead and uh, actually write that function. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to say void show bin, and it's the same kind of uh, it's basically the call we just did. So int value int x int y and now we need to add care the on pattern and care the off pattern all right so it's the same kind of thing we did before int bit and then for bit equals seven bit is greater than or equal to zero bit minus minus i guess i could have just copied that but we're going to retype it and then if the value binary and with one shifted left bit number of times. Otherwise, do that. All right, so if it's been, uh, uh, if it's an on light, it, if it needs to be an on light, now what do we do? Well, now we've already done a get image, so now we need to do a put image. And where does this need to be? This needs to start at x plus seven minus the bit 
times the size and y and we need to tell it what uh, memory we're going to blast up onto the screen. This, in this case, is the on bit. And then there's a parameter that you need to give it that tells it what mode it's going to use when it, when it uh, blasts this onto the screen. And the one that we want to just make a direct copy and put it on screen is the GP set. You can look at the documentation for OpenWatcom and look at the put image documentation, uh, and you can see the other modes that are on there. But to just make a direct copy of what we've done before, we're going to use GP set. Same thing down here for the off bit. So it's going to be put image x plus 7 minus the bit times the size y, the off pattern, GP set. And now if I've done that correctly, uh, now it should, uh, back down here, it should, there we go, it's, it's filled the background with blue. And then it's going to draw an on light. And then it's going to make room for it in memory. And then it's going to grab that region of the screen and store it in memory. And it's going to draw an off light. It's going to make enough room for that in memory and it's going to make a copy of that region of, of the screen and store it in that variable called bit off. And now I'm going to just count up from zero to 255 and I'm going to use the get image, uh, sorry, the, the put image uh, method uh, to print that light pattern up on the screen. It's then going to wait for me to press a key and it's going to do the same thing using my uh, less efficient uh, show binary. Now, actually, I should say uh, less efficient is a little bit care. I need to be careful here because uh, the uh, using the ellipse functions, it turns out for images this big, uh, you will see that the the ellipse functions are faster to draw, but they do give you those visual artifacts. You don't get those visual artifacts using get image, put image. It's a little bit slower with graphics this size. I mean, we are using something that's, how big was this? This was uh, 60 by 60 pixels in size. Uh, so it, it's going to be a little bit, you'll notice a little bit slower to count up, uh, but you won't get the visual artifacts that we get. We just try to draw a series of ellipse uh, functions. So let's go ahead and, and do Watcom compiler and linker dash Q to make it quiet binary.c not seeing any errors. All right. So when I run this, it's going to count up from zero to 255 using the get image, put image. It's going to wait for me to press a key and do it count up again from zero to 255 uh, using the ellipse functions. So here we go. Binary. And there it is. It's, you're not seeing the artifacts, the drawing artifacts of writing each one of these or, or drawing each one of these lights individually as a series of four ellipses. Uh, you're just seeing uh, a, a, an image being blasted onto screen that was already previously copied. You'll notice, by the way, that the, uh, the drawing the initial uh, LED, the on LED, and then the off LED, and then doing the copying and stuff like that, that was so fast you didn't even see it up on screen because it, it happened and then it started drawing the bit patterns right away. I'm going to press space and you'll now see the same counting from 0 to 255, but you're going to be drawing it with each one of the ellipse functions, those four ellipse functions. A little bit faster to run, but you will see some visual artifacts. And so you can see you're, so you're seeing some visual artifacts there, especially in the middle uh, of the LED lights. So yeah, it ran faster, but with those visual artifacts. Let me run it one more time. And you can see, again, you're not seeing those visual artifacts. You're seeing a little bit of painting happening on the screen, uh, but for a smaller uh, graphical image, which I will use in the final version of the program I'm working on, uh, that won't be really as, as noticeable. Most importantly, we're not getting the visual artifacts of, of drawing and then erasing uh, these different ellipses. So if I hit space, you can just see it happen one more time, but that'll happen with the uh, graphical artifacts. Yep, you see those graphical artifacts. It looks a little bit messy in my mind. Uh, yeah, a little bit faster, but uh, we're not going to be counting up 0 to 55 exactly like this and this other program that I'm working on. So I wanted to be able to share, if you wanted to draw an image to the screen and do it repeatedly, the best way to do it is to use get image and put image to just copy that region of the screen into memory and then use put image to just basically stamp that onto the screen wherever you need it to be.
And so that's a better way to write a program. Now, before I go, I want to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. So thank you very much for that. Uh, also, uh, some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially here for that as well. So thank you very much. Uh, visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.